Yeah, that, that it's always been, uh, it was my goal when I when I was uh, 20 years old. <laughs> I started, started writing um, in 1985, that's how old I am. But, that, but that part of my goal was to try to tell stories that show black people in the, in the, in the best light, you know, really to, to honor my people with, with these things. And so Fresh Prince and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, things like, uh, you know, Princess and the Frog, you know, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a bridge between those, uh, yeah. uh, those things. And so when this project came out, you know, Defiant, you get to tell the story of Robert Smalls, uh, this great injustice that this story has not been told before um, or has not been told in this way before, uh, that was right up my alley. <laughs> and, and I felt like I'd spent a lifetime of telling stories like this. I know how to tell it and I know how to tell it in an entertaining way. And so so that's part of it. And then when the Kickstarter campaign just flew off the roof, it was like, OK, good. People want to hear the story. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so I feel like I'm hopefully the right person to do it. Yeah. And we have the team that is that is that is right to do it. Uh, an amazing team. Um, I'll say, or, you know, Ray Anthony Height is, uh, is is drawing it. He's the OG. He's amazing. You know, Black yeah. Panther. Uh, you know, Chris Robinson is editing also from uh, Black Panther. Uh, Nicholas Draper, Draper Ivy is doing the covers. They're like Rembrandts. It's amazing. You know, yeah. uh, these guys. Everybody that we asked to, to, to do it said yes. And so that's that's what you know that, that makes it even better. Awesome. Well, he's telling me to wrap it up. I know. So I thank you for your time. First, I do want to know how did you become involved with the project? Um, I was working with my, one of my mentors and, and, and great friends, uh, Bill Duke, on a project. And Bill Duke was telling me about the company that is Legion M and telling me about the story that, that he was a part of the Robert Small story. And I had never heard of, of the Robert Small story. I, and, and the fact that he's true. American hero is something that was unbeknownst to me at the time. Yeah. Um, then in a, in a world that's so small, Chris Cooper, who's also a producer on the movie, actually works for Legion. He's the actual Legion M rep, rep at, on the production side for the okay. project. Him and I go back 20 years, man, 15, 20 years. And um, I guess they were, they talked internally and thought that, you know, it'd be a good idea to bring me aboard because projects that I had been a part of before, which I won't mention right now, um, um, had a lot of, have a lot of purpose to them. And, and were really, you know, um, integral in, in, in bringing awareness to black people about stories that they weren't aware of and, and, and some first time stories. So that's all I'm gonna say. And, and this is a first time story. This is something that is, for me, um, extremely purposeful, and 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 the fact that you know I'm I'm known for being in the fantasism world, you know what I'm saying, of, of stories like this, and now I'm able to be a part of something that's a true superhero story, American superhero story about a real man who went through real things and triumphed in the end. So I was when they brought him, I was amazed and honored. You know, and this was a couple of years ago, now over two years ago now. And and yeah, so I've been a part. I've been producing this for the last two and a half years with Legion M and Bill Duke and and, and the great team. And now we have an all star team put together for this this graphic novel. And I couldn't be more excited. Man. That's awesome. Okay, and it's, I like that you use purposeful. So my follow up to that is: with the save the country, what it's in now is more important than ever to tell black stories. Oh yeah. So. Um, and this this project has the potential to have what I call the watchman effect. That was after you know, yeah, yeah. People learn that mom, they don't know everything years, about man. this country. Yeah, yeah. And so, what were the obstacles that you faced trying to bring this story to life? And do you foresee any possible backlash that could result in more whitewashing of history? Well, you know, it's funny. It's, you know, one thing we were talking about that last night with what, what, what you called the watchman effect. Because, you know, um, we were talking to people from Kickstarter last night and, 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 and we were saying, you know, the importance of this story is, is, is beyond what we can even imagine or think because you saw with Watchmen, you know, it was the first time people even, I mean, you saw in 2020 with Watchmen that it was the first time people ever heard of the Tulsa Massacre. And a lot of people thought that that was just something that Watchmen wrote, the writers of Watchmen wrote <laughs> for the intro. So um, I, I think that, that you know, the backlash to me isn't, it's not, it's not going to be a thing, you know why? Because it's a story, it's a FUBU story. It's for us and it's by us for the first time. Right. Yeah. So so that being the case is going to guarantee that there, it won't be any whitewashing. Of it, right. And we, and we and we did this purposely. 
we did this purposely because we created a team that understands the importance, that relates to the struggle, that is 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 has an, you know artistic integrity, you know, at the forefront of who we are are in our careers individually. So we come together, and then that compounds. Um, now the obstacles to answer that part of the question, the obstacles rather have been, you know, somewhat. You know, they've they've been there. You know, I think one because because it's a story one that's never been told before, and then two, a lot of people don't have that height of awareness about who Robert Smalls is, right? So then, you know, when something like that happens, it, it, it's it's well, what's the importance of telling the story? You know, to, and I'm talking about to the powers that be, right? Right. But then at the same time. On one side, because it's two-sided coin. On one side, that's one side, and then on the other side, it's well, why haven't I heard about this story? And what do I need to do to help tell it? So that's why we've been 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 one, you know, getting the momentum that we're getting now. You know, we were funded on Kickstarter in less than, than, than forty-five minutes, and now we've exceeded seven times what the funding was. Um, it's just, it's just, and the momentum's growing every day. You know, people are reposting it. The who's who of you know, Black Hollywood, the who's who of historians, the who's who of, of politicians are starting to become aware, and 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 now we can we can really put a, a united front together to 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 kind of combat whatever obstacles are set up. Now, I, don't get me wrong; I think that there will be more obstacles, but now we have a graphic novel that one can in, invade the hearts and minds of those that that look. That, to that medium for information. But then at the same time, the youth, which is the generation that's the most important, are gonna be able to have a tool in schools, you know, or, or, or in comic book stores and, and they're online to really to really um, inform them to a point of, of action, right? And I mean, you know, unanimously action, but then individually, because I think that courage is a commodity. So the courage of Robert Small is now gonna be commodified in a way to where it becomes a, a, a benchmark for what to do, how to think, what, how to see, you know, how to talk, blah, blah, blah. Awesome. Yeah, man. That's, thank you so much. Yeah, this no is problem, great. Man. And I hope that we can get more people involved, like interested in this story. Go to the Kickstarter and become a part of this journey, man. ASAP. Yes, yes. indeed. Thank yes, you. indeed. Hey, thank you, man. No. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, of course. Always. Yes, sir. What is the role of the editor when it comes to projects based on historical figures? Well, uh, I would say, you know, for any project, really, the editor is, wears a lot of different hats. The editor is, you know, um, uh, creative help, but he's also a logistical help. And he's also, um, you know, a little bit of like emotional help sometimes too, right? Um, but uh, yeah, editing comic books is, is a really like multi... Um, disciplinary type of thing, and I, I love doing it. Um, but uh, you know, in, in for this project for Defiant specifically, um, you know, Rob is an in incredible storyteller. He's you know written stuff that you've, you've watched and, and seen before and laughed along with, with with him. But you know, comics is new for him, and so I'm sort of helping bridge the gap for um, you know his experience as a storyteller versus me being able to like know you know what works on a page uh, you know writing wise uh, writing for for artists in this way um, and uh, when it comes to the uh, historical accuracy and that, that type of stuff um, you know we have a, a historian who's uh, you know works very closely with Rob we have a, 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 we have a descendant of uh, Robert Smalls also working on the project so giving us like you know, uh, um, oral, you know, family history, basically. Um, so yeah, don't don't worry. Like that that uh, that historical part is is definitely forefront of our mind um, and very important to this project for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Hey, what did you find to be the most fulfilling part of being able to bring this story to life? Ooh, what is the okay, so uh, I would say that the fact that this is. I'll just I'll out myself. I did not know about the story until uh, they would they brought it to me and said, "Hey, do you want to work on this?" Right. Um, so that's kind of a tragedy. Like, uh, you know, I'm not 
not the best. Uh, uh, I wasn't the best student in school, but I definitely would have perked up if I had heard about this. Um, and so being able to, uh, you know, take this uh, story out to the world at large uh, in a format that is, you know, a little bit easier on the eyes, right, than, than you know, a hundred, you know, a thousand page book or something, uh, a textbook or whatever. But, um, yeah, being able to, uh, you know, uh, being able to, to bring this to a larger audience is definitely the thing that I'm most happy about with being involved with the project. Thank you so much for your time. I love your art. Oh, I think, thank you. I think, I think it's great. And I, one of the things I noticed, especially when I look at black characters, is, is like lighting and texture, specifically okay. hair color. Yeah. And um, my colleague showed me some of the static drawings and oh. it just, it, I had an emotional reaction because of, of the the texture in the hair. It's oh. just something you don't normally get to see. So I was interested. Um, what do you, can you talk about your process when you're creating those textures for black hair in your images? Um, what was the last part? Well, like when you're creating the texture, when you're working on that effect, mm -hmm. how, what's your process? When you're oh, on those? my process. Yeah. Um, hmm. It's interesting because like it always depends on like what the scene calls for. Okay. So it's usually, I think if it's like further away, I might make it like a solid black, but if the camera, the camera, the camera like zooms in, then I might put more, more textures there. But for the biggest thing is like always trying to get like the fade right. Because so many times in comics, especially, you see this, that hard line, like, oh, why don't they put like a <laughs> fade or something, like right, something, right. you know. Um, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna make a big deal about that. But <laughs> there's so many things I could say. I've seen Twitter threads of just, but uh, my process, I think, is I kind of outline it and then I leave spaces, like I'll black it in, I'll leave like open spaces and I kind of like take like a, a charcoal, or not a charcoal, like a burnt, a uh, tree texture or like a uh, sketch. There's a, there's a specific, um, specific uh, pencil that I'll use and like just kind of do that. And that helps, you know. I try to draw it in a way to where it's like animation friendly, but that's right. usually my, my process, yeah. Alrighty. And so why do you think it's important to have such accurate description? Oh, we don't, we don't get it that much. So it's like you kind of want to see it for yourself when you're like, okay, I see how other people are trying to do it, but it's like, but I know how to do it, or I think I know how to do it. And there's always gonna be some people that do it better, but it's like, what's my approach to it? And I was like, okay, this is, it's like problem, this is problem solving, you know? Yeah. So can you tell me what was your inspiration, when you worked on the cover art for the novel, mm -hmm. where did you find your your inspiration for Captain Smalls? Because it looks, mm -hmm. it looks great. Okay, uh, he sent me a bunch of pictures, Rob, uh, Rob Edwards sent me a bunch of pictures, and it was just like he wanted to get that stare like down right like so much to the point where he's like sending me like a picture of like a lion it's like you know something like that i'm like okay you know and for me if you're familiar from work like the thing that i kind of take pride in is like getting like the eyes like eye acting i guess so that was really fun and have someone go so in depth with like how the eyes should be rob has no pun intended, an eye for detail. So he's good at seeing things that even I can't pick up on because he's just, he's had more experience than I do. So I'm like, I'm learning how to be even better, you know, and it's really, really nice. It's it's, it's super cool because, you know, you don't, you always want to be teachable. Right. And yeah, I might take pride in one thing. That doesn't mean that I can't learn more. So it's like, oh, you put me on some shit I didn't even know. Okay, please, you know, and it's really fun. It's really fun. It's tough. Rob is very particular, but it but it's but it's still exciting. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for your time. Um, I'm with. I never get questions like these. I'm so glad I got a question like this. This is awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. Is there a difference between drawing for fully fictional characters versus projects based on historical figures? Absolutely. Likeness is is key. Uh, sometimes you can kind of fudge likenesses if it's in a time frame where, like uh, Captain Small's story, there's not a lot of pictures or references where you know, Captain Small's was young man okay. or even a boy, and that's where we're starting. Um, so you kind of like take the pictures and references of the family that's older 
and you figure it out somewhere in between. Yeah. Uh, but that would be the importance of it. Okay, awesome. And um, is this a story you were familiar with before Defiant? And if not, how did you learn about it? So when I was a kid, I grew up in Compton, I had a teacher. Uh, and it was very brief uh, history class. And she mentioned it, right? It was one of those things where uh, hi, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. It was one of those things where you're, it was one of those things you grab onto. Uh -huh. As a kid, like, that's kind of a cool thing, but it doesn't get uh, expounded upon. Right. Right? And then it comes up later on in life. You know, I'm a full grown adult, mostly. And uh, I feel it. Right? I kind of. And then here it is. I get approached to do the story about someone who. I only briefly heard about it. My kids haven't even heard about uh, Robert Small, so they don't teach that in, in oh, school. Wow. Too. So yeah. it was pretty it was pretty awesome. Now, that being said, coming into this project and finding out everything that I didn't know before, it did, it's more incredible than I ever thought. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's magical. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you so Let's much. See, we're multiverse of color now. So we've rebranded. Yes. But we'll, so to me, one of the best parts of black culture is storytelling. How has your family kept the story of, of your ancestor alive for so long? Well, you know, it's a great question. Um, I grew up with my grandmother, who was Robert Small's granddaughter. Okay. So. It, it has, you know, even though when I think about the Civil War, I think about that period of time, I think about people like Abraham Lincoln, that sounds, that's not a, really accessible, it sounds so long ago. But like when I think about my family, it's, it, it's, it's really, it's not that long ago. Um, you know, my great grandmother Elizabeth was on the planter on May 13th, 1862, when her father Robert sailed it through Charleston Harbor to freedom. She died just, she died in 1959, I was born in 1962, so three years before I was born. So it's not like it was forever ago. I have pictures of her with my adult mother at the time, with my grandparents. You know, so this whole history is is really accessible. It's not like it's ancient history. Now, it's gonna get more difficult for my kids, um, for, for their kids, time makes these you know, more difficult, but it's just been a part of the DNA of, of our family. And how old were you when you first learned the story? Do you remember? I, you know, no. I mean, I just grew up with it. I mean, okay. it, it, you know, I remember um, we went to a family reunion, I think in 1968, you know, I think it was six years old where an aunt, a cousin, had a motel that was called the Planter Motel. The Planter was the name of the vessel that Robert used to sail. And, uh, you know, I remember I was one of those kids who liked to sit at the knee of my elders and listen to their stories and the like. And I remember listening to all these, and these were all Robert Small's grandchildren who were kind of talking about him and talking about exploits. Yeah. So um, I've, I've just, you know, it's, it's always been a part of me. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I hope we can get more people to like learn about this yeah, story yeah, and thank bring you. it in. I appreciate thank your time. You. Of course. Thank